I think self-worth is such a big issue. And I think, um, especially for, for women, that it's all about the way we look. It's all about the way we present ourselves. It's about how much skin we show. How much about attention we get. How many heads we can turn. And, and we feel valueless yeah. if we didn't turn a guy's head because you know our outfit wasn't small enough so <laughs> it, it's just it's all about how we feel on the inside it's all about where are we going to get our definition and once our again identity. it's we have to go to the foundation we have to go to the person that created us and knows who we are mm. and knows what we're called to be so if we go to that source if we go to God to find out who we are we're not going to want to turn heads we're not going to need that I mean yeah sure it still feels nice of course but we're not going to not gonna be defined mm -hmm. by that. Mm -hmm. That's not going to be who we are. Mm -hmm. And so I, I think even with us girls, like, yeah, we love to look pretty. We like to dress up. Yeah. We like makeup. We love all that stuff. But you don't need to do it to turn heads. But that's not who we are. It's because it's fun. I can go out without any makeup on and be totally 100% content with who I am because I know that God loves me. But I it's know been what he a journey to me. get there. Right. It's been a nice, long journey to I get there. I used to never be able to go out of the house without makeup on. I felt <laughs> worthless. I felt like, oh my gosh, everybody's looking at me thinking how ugly I am <laughs> yeah. without my makeup. But then I'm like, like, who cares? We're created for so much more. You know, Isaiah 61 is a perfect picture of what we're made to do. We're made to open blind eyes, to set the captives free. You know, we were created to walk on water. And yet we're concerned about showing a little skin so we can turn a guy's head. And we spend our lives entertaining things that are far below our calling. And we miss changing lives. We miss changing cultures because we're so concerned about us because we feel valueless because we, we are not going to the source and so the world is missing out on our callings because we're focused on things that we're never meant to be focused on all through junior high and high school and actually I think it's pretty much most of my life I remember you know up until 18 of every time I looked in the mirror I hated what I saw and every time um, you know I would go somewhere I was just so insecure and I you know I didn't like my personality I didn't like how I looked and I didn't like my height and my weight and just so many different things and I and I, you know, after years of just feeling, just disliking who I was, I finally was like, okay, I need to, ch I want to change this. I need to change this. So I started, you know, having eating disorders. And then through that, I started, I got really bad depression because, you know, it was constantly, all I did was think about myself and, you know, changing myself. And that, you know, caused, totally caused me to just have been in a depressed state all the time because there's no, there's no end to that. I mean, mm -hmm. it, it just cries out, give, give, and there's never, eating disorders is never an end. There's never an end to it. It's, it's a constant hunger that there is no there is no end for. No matter how much weight you lose, you always need to lose five more pounds. And that um, that whole process, um, I remember um, kind of having a revelation um, in a moment of you know going, you know having a, I you could call it like an eating sort of attack or whatever. Um, just just that low of lows and like wanting to do all that again and I just had like kind of this epiphany of I can't do this anymore I can't live one more day being tormented by these eating disorders I can't live one more day being tormented by this depression and I need help and it was in that moment I really think God loves when we come to the end of ourselves and we realize we need help because then we finally are like okay God we're gonna come outside of ourselves stop looking inward and we're gonna come to you with our problems and um, you know, I fell to my knees in that moment, and I was like, God, I don't know if you even care about me. I don't know if you even hear my prayers or anything, because at that time, I felt like it was in a dark season, even that too. And I just began um, praying and saying, God, I've heard you're a healer, and I desire you to heal my life, and I need you to heal me being the source, because if you don't heal me, I don't think I can make it till tomorrow. And it was amazing, because in that moment, I really felt like, there was going to be disappointment on God's part. And I really felt like if I tell him that I'm struggling, he's going to turn his back on me and he's going to leave me forever. And so, but I took that chance and I really pressed through. And it was amazing because in that moment, once I poured out my heart, in that moment, I felt this presence that I'd never felt before. And I began hearing him speak the first time to me in my heart. And I felt him say, um, you know about how I was his temple and he had created me for a purpose and I was destroying what he had created me to be and in that moment it was like scales fell off my eyes and I realized in that moment who God that in it in a sense it was like I had a heavenly eyes and I was able to see God created me for a purpose I don't need to kill myself in a sense I don't need to destroy what he had created but he really challenged my heart and, he's, and, and in that moment I felt this burden lift I felt this cloud just disappear but in that moment, I was like, okay, God, I'll, I know you've healed me. I'll do anything for you. And he said, the first thing you need to do is go tell your mother 
what you've been doing and asked for her forgiveness. I just began discussing with her and, and you know, just bawling and just telling her what I've been doing. And the same feeling I felt of when God wrapped, you know, God's presence was there, the same thing my mom just wrapped her arms around me. I was like, I'm gonna help you through this. I struggled with eating disorders when I was a kid. And we began studying as a family one of Joyce Meyer's book, Battlefield of the Mind. And for about a year we began, you know, eating disorders, yes, it's a disorder, but really it starts in the battlefield of your mind. And really it's all about your thought patterns and how you view yourself. And God took us on a journey as a whole family of us taking, capture, taking captive our thoughts. And through that whole process, God set me free of, you know, that insecurity and, and you know, the lingering depression and all these and all the different things. Even though I was healed of the anorexia and bulimia at that time, I still had to do a huge work on my mind. And now it's it's interesting because my mind, before I was so filled with thousands of thoughts all the time, my mind was always tormenting me in a sense, to now it's peaceful. Yes, I have had some dark moments in my own life. I've struggled with depression, I've had a skewed um, sense of self-image all of my life. My weight has yo-yoed 50 pounds, 60 pounds down. Um, I had a miscarriage and now I'm a proud mom, but a struggling mom of a little toddler. And so I've gone through some doubts in my life as I think most women normally do as they're growing through their seasons. But through all of those seasons when I was getting down across the bottom, crying, heaving, I could not catch my breath, and I thought, what am I living for? Is all of this worth it? My inner hell, my inner torment that keeps playing over my mind every single day, stuff that I hadn't even shared with my husband, George. Stuff that I had been dealing with for years. And the only thing that could pull me out of that was Jesus Christ loved me and he had a purpose and a destiny for my life. No matter what TV told me, no matter what the magazines showed me, no matter what skewed message and image I had about myself. Because all that stuff is a trap. It's sent from the enemy. And you know who's the prince of this world? The enemy. Yeah, his name is Satan and he is real. And every day there's a spiritual warfare, a battle, a war out there fighting for your very soul. Are you going to be overtaken by that? Or are you going to stand up and rise and proclaim and say, yes, thank you, Lord, that you have given me everything that I need to be victorious in your life. And you know, I can honestly say that I hold on to that strength because years ago I made a commitment to Jesus Christ and I asked him to come into my life to radically change me and transform me. Even though there are days that I struggle and even like Becca was talking about, you know, you have kind of lapses back into your judgment and you may struggle with depression or thoughts of suicide. That's all a lie from the enemy. Jesus Christ can wipe your slate clean, make you a fresh, brand new person so that you can get back out there in life, fight, live, be victorious, and live in freedom as the Lord wants you to live and to be. Has it just not been the same and worth it for you every day? Are you tired to be in that rut? will give your life over to Jesus Christ. He wants to be your Savior and your Lord. It's a very simple thing to do. Just ask. If you have questions, jump online, therevolutiontv.com. I would love to chat with you. God bless you guys. Thank you so much for watching The Revolution. If God be for you, who can be against you?